Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to a kind of a special show here today. This is kind of like an on-the-fly show. We got uh, in the co-captain's chair, the co-pilot's chair, Jack Toledano. Uh, Jack and I were talking a couple weeks ago, and uh, he and I are both big Jethro Tull fans. And uh, I don't know, we were talking about box sets and which ones do you have and all this kind of stuff. And uh, I was like, why don't we just do like a show where we talk about cool Jethro Tull box sets and special releases and memorabilia and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so what we did was we uh, pulled some stuff. I actually have a lot more than I'm going to show, but um, I just figure I have enough to show as it is. I want, for me, I wanted to keep it a little recent, some of the stuff that's come out recently. So, uh, you know, we got all these like Stephen Wilson remixes and the, the, the book, the book box sets with, you know, with the book and the extra the DVDs and all this great stuff. I mean, Ian's just got like all this stuff up his sleeve, right, Jack? I mean, it's crazy. Oh, it's insane. All, all the collectibles he has now. And, you know, it, it, it's funny. So uh, I was cramming for trying to get ready some last minute pre preparedness. So one of the seed, one of the uh, four, uh, 40th anniversary editions that, uh, that, and we'll, we'll talk about too, how we acquired them, Pete and I, but, uh, I was showing my wife, Susan, one of them. I'm, I'm, you know, she, you know, of course she's poo-pooing me for spending the money. I'm like, you know what? In a couple of years, these things could be well into the hundreds. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think most of these box sets that have come out like in the last like 10 years, uh, you know, the, the box sets with the books and the DVDs and the, you know, the new mixes and everything. Uh, I think they usually retail for about like what, between 45 and 50 bucks when they come out. But once they're like, they've sold them all, it's like if you want to get a copy and you got to go get it from like one of these sellers or buy it secondhand. I mean, you're, you're talking 150, 100, you want to 200, laugh. 250. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. You want to laugh? One of them still has the receipt in it from uh, from one of the, the last of the Mohicans uh, um, CD and record stores on Long Island that wow. I bought it from. But we'll, when we get to that one, I'll, I'll show everybody the receipt and give that store a very quick little plug. Cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. Uh, I'd, I've said it before. I'll say it again. It's like, I think that for me, you know, a lot of bands have over the course of the last 30 years have reissued their re release like so many times. So it's like, you know, they have the first CD issue and then they remaster them a couple years later, then they remaster them again, or they reissue them with bonus tracks and you get this, right. this one's got a bonus disc. I got to say, I think Tull is probably one of the bands that I have rebought the catalog more than any other. Between It's like yeah. Tull, Yes, Rush, Deep Purple, Zeppelin. I mean, I, I, I bought these catalogs so many times. I'm like, and I, I said a couple years ago, I was like, okay, I'm not buying any more Jethro Tull reissues, no matter what they do. I know. And then Stephen Wilson gets his hands on them and they put out these gorgeous box sets. And I'm like, oh, man. And, and we're going to talk about Stephen Wilson also when I get to a, a certain uh, collectible edition, because... I mean, the the difference from the original recording was just amazing. Uh, some of these just sound spectacular. And yeah. It's like, you know, yeah. and there are people who are out there saying, it's like, well, I like the original version the way it was and all this kind of stuff. It's like, well, that's nah. great. But, you know, but a lot, he has really gone to great lengths to just kind of like, um, just make sure that every instrument and every little note and melody is just kind of, you know, it's got the natural separation and brought out to the floor. And it's like, you know, some of these, I listened to, you know, the original version next to the, the, the remix. And I'm like, wow, it kind of makes you look at the music a little bit differently. And I know, and I know the purists are probably like, you know, you got to leave those classic recordings as is and all that. And I get all that, but it's just kind of cool. I mean, to put it on like a, you know, like I go put it on my home theater system. And I'm like, wow. It's like, listen to that. Pretty, yeah. pretty cool. Right. And then all the bonus stuff that for right. me, that's, you know, the booklets, which, which these are books. I mean, these are like, most of these are like 80 page books. Oh yeah. All these great photographs and interviews and all this right. commentary. And then you got, and this like boggles my mind. The fact that there are still songs in the vaults that, that Ian has not released until now. And maybe there's stuff he still yeah. hasn't released. Unbelievable. What What's amazing is it, it's like you said, it's like the, Every time you rebuy it, there's something extra, and it's like, right, and it makes it worth well, buying, right? Uh, you know, a uh, funny story Pete and I, for, you know, just for this recording, and which is okay because I wanted it anyway, but we, bo we both went on to eBay and we both won our, uh, our auctions at the same time. Two different albums, very close to each other in the mid 70s, but yep. we'll get into those. But yeah, from the same vendor in Ohio, yep. <laughs> 
Cost about cost about the same. About the same, yeah, yeah. But but in actuality, it's like the the price of the auction that we both wound up paying was probably a much less than what we would have paid if we would have bought it from someone else outright, like a buy now type of thing. Cause I've yeah. seen the prices of both of these pretty through the roof. So um, yeah. Well, somebody, I was just telling Sue that, uh, so the, the one CD that, uh, that I ended up getting, I think I spent like 137 before shipping, but then uh, like a couple of days prior, somebody, and, and the one I got was still in cellophane. It was still in this, the factory seal. Yeah. The one too. that I got bid outbid the other day had been used. A, a yeah. <clears throat> and it was and, more. And the guy paid outbid me for over two hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. That's what these are going for now. It's crazy. So it's that crazy. encourages me that that they'll really be worth something someday. Yeah, and also like too. Now that we kind of realize how great these things are, it's like you know when the uh, if you, I mean who, for whoever's interested, and then when the box sets come out for like A and Broadsword and the Beast, if you really like those, out get them when they first come out because they're only going to yeah. be like thirty five, forty, forty five bucks. So yeah, there like, are a few in the eighties that I I would I think I'd be interested in. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So so anyway, after all that uh, talk, let's get started. So, right? so um, yeah, if I if I may, so. Uh, that's right. So yeah, so Jack and I made a little deal here. Yes, and, uh, I'm a little new to the game. So uh, um, before before I started helping Pete out with these videos, which I love doing, um, Pete had done some that you know are kind of near and dear to my heart. So Pete had already done a top ten Jethro Tull. So to not take up too much time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rattle off my top ten Jethro Tull. And uh, I'm only going to do songs six, uh, 10 down to 6 for the time being with very little explanation. And then later in the show, I'll do uh, 5 down to 1. So uh, did you have anything to say before I started, Pete? No, I'm, I, I mentioned in here them because I, we didn't, okay. I, I, he didn't share his list with me, so I'm curious. No, I did not. Okay, so number 10, uh, an album you love, Benefit, to cry you a song. Number 9 off of Heavy Horses, another album that you really love. And this song is near and dear to my heart, One Brown Mouse. Uh, number eight, uh, the title track to Songs from the Wood. Love that song. Yep. Love the chorus, everything about it. Uh, number seven, again, off Benefit. Uh, I had bought the greatest hit. My first Jethro Tull album was M.U. The Best of Jethro Tull. It's a good one. On it teacher fell in love with it immediately and you know, it was like a, a match made in heaven and you know and opened me up to a whole new world of Jethro Tull. Uh, number six and this is this one kind of crept into my list recently this one's off of Aqualung my god my god that's a great song <laughs> yes yes so that's that's you know and people want to talk to me about it after you know on you know in the YouTube comments, happy to do so. Cool. That's some good choices there. Can't, can't argue you. with any of those. I'll be interested to see what the top uh, five are. Yeah. Well, I think uh, <laughs> some of these will be no-brainers for you. Well, I mean, that's possible. We'll see. Yeah. There's so many good songs. I mean, it's, it's, it, I remember doing my list was pretty hard because um, yeah, it's a lot of great songs, and I really have to dig this band oh, a lot. Yeah. So let's start with where it all began, right? So this is, uh, this is, this was, this is, this was uh, from... Uh, was this 1969, I believe, this came out, right? Uh, 68 or 69. 69, yeah. 69 something like that. Right. Um, this is uh, probably 68, actually. So this is the, the box set, all right, with the Stephen Wilson remix. So you have uh, CD1 that has a Stephen Wilson stereo remix. You've got associates. So you got the regular album. You've got associated recordings, which for here is a love story, Christmas song, and serenade to a cuckoo. Uh, and then you've got the Someday the Sun Won't Shine for You, uh, okay. move, move On Alone, Ultimate Confusion, that's all disc one. Disc two, you've got um, original mixes and BBC sessions, okay? The BBC stuff is from July of 1968. Uh, and then you've got November 68, you've got a bunch of radio advertisements, mono singles of Sunshine Day, Aeroplane, Blues yes, from the 18th. I love, love Sunshine Day. Oh, uh, it's awesome, right? Yeah. Uh, that one I bought off of uh, <laughs> Apple iTunes because I was uh, I was looking for some uh, unreleased Jethro. Tull. You got to have it, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. 
And then disc three, you've got uh, the original 1968 UK stereo mix. Okay, so that's the original album release. And then also the original 1968 mono mix, the 2008 remaster. So you've got various versions now. So you got the Stephen Wilson stereo remix, you've got the original stereo mix, the UK release, and then the 68 mono mix, but the but the 2008 remaster of that. And then if that wasn't enough, you've got a DVD audio, which has the original album remix by Stephen Wilson to 4.1 DTS, AC3 Dolby, Surround, blah, blah, blah. You got an NTSC region, um, audio, this, that, or the other thing, all sorts of stuff, right? So just to give you a quick little rundown, you know, these, these booklets are, these are books. These are books. Yeah, uh, and it's, this are. is not something you're going to read in an hour. This, you know, each one of these I actually took and, and great stuff. You get old, like um, kind of live gig posters of, you know, the CDs. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you get a nice rundown at the back of Stephen Wilson on how, you know, his experience in remix and there's a lot of concert oh, photos. I love of, that picture. Uh, it, it was the, uh, the this was picture. Yep. They, yeah. With the yep. dog in the corner over here. Yep, exactly. Right. And they and they talk about the whole photography session to do that as well. Yeah, it's it's very so cool. Funny. You think they're old men, but they're here they are in their twenties. I know, I know. And this is cool because they talk they tell the whole story at the beginning of the band and how they literally were playing like all these like, you know, gigs with other blues bands. I mean, they just came up as a blues band, right? And then they started to morph their sound after this album. And how, you know, once Mick Abrams left and all that kind of stuff, you even get like a very cool, like kind of family tree, musical history tree. Oh, nice. You know, yeah. Which is really cool. Um, I mean, these these things are just like a trevor, treasure trove of information. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, you know, overall, this was is not one of my favorite Tull albums. I like it for what it is. But I think that, uh, you know, when you kind of hear all of this in this one package and it gives you a little different appreciation for the album. So that's um, my first did they talk? Did they talk at all about song for Jeffrey and why it sounds so different? Is is, is vocals? Uh, I believe they do. They go into all the songs on here, like, like yeah, you're yeah. singing into a coffee mug or something. Like yeah, that. they use different effects on his on his vocals. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, right. Yeah, they 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 go into detail in all the songs and stuff in the recordings and whatnot. So it's uh, pretty cool. And they you know, talk a lot about how Ian was really trying to. Uh, develop his flute playing at the time because you know right. he plays just as much harmonica on that first album as he yeah. does uh, flute. So uh, and that you know when you read this, the the commentary in the stand up reissue, you they talk more about that. Right. Okay. So uh, we we both have uh, stand up in various forms. So I have it in this form. So I'll talk about it very briefly. Uh, let me bring it closer. Um, did it, it's oh okay i thought it had still had the price on it this is basically uh, uh like a second version but uh, what i love about this it, it doesn't give you really a lot of extras but it does give you the original pop-up um i should have done it the other way so let's try that again there yeah i just did the same thing that you did <laughs> yeah well, let's try and coordinate our lefts and our rights. I know, you, right? Yeah. yeah. But uh, so this this has the original 10. It's got a few songs off of uh, the Living in the Past uh, compilation. Yep. Driving songs, Sweet Dream, Living in the Past. A few different versions of Beret, A New Day Yesterday, Nothing is Easy, Fat Man, etc., cetera, et cetera. Then uh, it has uh, CD2 is uh, a live at... Carnegie Hall, and uh, the DVD is also uh, live at Carnegie Hall, but it's audio only. So uh, it gives you some visuals on the screen while it plays through, but no, no video concert. But right. later on, as we get into these, some of them do, and I'll, the one that I have does have it, which was a very pleasant surprise, but we'll get to that. So and that's, the re that's the reason why you got to have both this and this because this has the whole Carnegie Hall thing on it, right? Um, right. Whereas this the this reissue does not. So this has got uh, basically everything that Jack mentioned on disc one, which is the original album with the Stephen Wilson remix and all the associated recordings from that time period. Then you've got disc two has live at the Stockholm concert concert du set, however the hell you say that. Oh, from okay. 19, from nineteen sixty nine, and that's got the 
The first show is uh, To Be Sad is a Mad Way to Be. That's all that's left from that sh part of the show. From the second show, you got uh, My Sunday Feeling, Martin's Tune, uh, To Be Sad is a Mad Way to Be, Back to the Family, Dharma for One, Nothing is Easy in a Song for Jeffrey. Then you get a couple radio spots, and then the, the DVD has audio and video. So it contains a stand-up with additional, you know, Living in the Past, Driving Song Beret, different mixes, uh, film footage recorded the 9th of January, 1969 at the Stockholm Concert Doucet of the songs To Be Sad Is A Mad Way To Be and Back To The Family. So only, only two tracks and a flat transfer of the album and uh, you know all that other stuff. And then of course, you've got here also the- Oh, okay. Uh, and yep. then, uh, you know, a very cool booklet, which, you know, again, has all sorts of very cool things. Oh, you know, we got the tour itineraries and you know notes from Stephen Wilson, notes from the band about the album. And I think what's really cool about some of these is like you know they talk to people like Glenn Cornick and Clive Bunker and what have you, and they get their impression of each of the songs. It's funny when they go back, especially on the first like two two or three albums, when you hear like you know Glenn Cornick and Clive Bunker and even Ian Anderson as well uh, and Martin Barr, who are like they they look at certain songs like yeah that was not a good song, yeah I didn't ever like that song, or oh that's my really? favorite song ever, and they all have like such completely different uh yeah. you know recollections of some of these songs so it's well, pretty that's cool. like any of us yeah 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 so so that's cool so what do we got next so we got benefit um, next right so just one more thing on stand-up so and before this whole covid thing happened and you know i was going commuting the, to my office five days a week and uh occasionally you know my son jason would call me up on my cell we chat but at the time he was living in Manhattan and he saw a record vendor on the street and he asked me, uh, uh, I see some Tull albums, are you interested in any? So uh, I said, yeah, get, you know what? And it was close to Christmas, I said, yeah, get me the stand up and just give it to me for Christmas. So that stand up LP is still sitting on my desk as basically a piece of artwork. And I haven't been back to my office in four months, so I. <laughs> so it's still there. Hopefully, it's there when you get back, right? Oh yeah, I, I'm I'm like one of the only Toad fans in that in that office. So. Oh okay. <laughs> yeah. So okay. So next. Um, so there's benefit, by the way. Uh, oh, okay. speaking of benefits, since we're going kind of in chronological order, so for whatever oh. reason, they kind of this is like the 40th anniversary of benefit, but they they should have done a 50th. Uh, they didn't. So I've, I've heard rumblings that they might be circling back and, you know, releasing benefit in one of these bigger boxes. I don't know, but uh, this is pretty cool. So this has the, uh, the Stephen Wilson uh, stereo remix of the original album. It's got the extra tracks, singing all day, sweet dreams, 17, and then a couple of different versions of teacher uh, CD two, you got associated recordings, you know, again, the witch's promise and a couple other teacher again inside. And then, uh, the DVD contains the 2013 mixes, uh, by Stephen Wilson of the album and what's no, video. no live videos, no live videos. No. Okay. But it's pretty cool. Right. And it's got, you know, a nice booklet just like the other ones do, which, uh, I'll show you quick here. All right. So Very all sorts nice. of stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know, well, if they come out with it. If they come out with a 50 on that, I, I think I definitely will get it. Yeah, I, I love this album. And it's funny yeah. to listen to the band talk about this album and how they really don't like, none of them really love this album really? much. And I, it's well, one of my favorites. You know what it is about that album is they tried to go in a more rock and roll direction. And, you know, uh, I would have talked about it more if we had the time. But uh, since To Cry You a Song, to me, that is like one of their ultimate rock and roll tracks. You know, no flute no frills uh, i don't think there's even any keyboards in that it's just uh it's a guitar and and yeah and in fact i was reading up in the booklet of benefit that actually both ian and martin play electric guitars on there so right. martin looks back on that song pretty fondly thinking that was like one of the rare instances where him and ian were riffing together on a song on electric you know supposedly uh, uh martin lent ian one of his les pauls for that song uh-huh there you go yeah that's what i read i think i read it in well We'll get to that later in another <laughs> piece of material that I have. Yeah. So uh, what's next? Uh, next, Aqualung next? Uh, I don't have Aqualung. Oh, Aqualung is next, but I don't have it. All right, I'll show my two. So I've got uh, sure. I've got the small version. Okay. Which is again got the uh, it's the 40th anniversary special edition, new stereo remixes, uh, and then uh, what else you got on here? 
that's basically all that's on here. So it's like the new Aqualung stereo mix and the new stereo and, and new stereo mixes plus the additional material. So here you've got, you know, lick your fingers clean and just trying to be and, you know, all that sort of stuff uh, up the pool. Dr. Brogan boom, you know, from later nursey, you know, all that cool like bonus stuff right Speaking so that's of, here yeah, deep tracks we always do the deep tracks uh you know to, you know the shows but um so on uh sirius xm radio there is a, a, a station called deep tracks and uh every once in a while i would listen to it to try and pick up some new gems but they actually played dr bogan broom on a couple wow on that's, the deep tracks station. that is pretty yeah. deep i wouldn't expect that i mean yeah I, tracks, yeah. Cool too. It's pretty cool too. I like it. Yeah. So here we have the uh, the box, you know, with the book. Uh, so here's got the Stephen Wilson stereo remix of the original album, disc two. And this is basically very similar to what I just showed you, but it's got the Stephen Wilson stereo remix uh, associated 1970-71 recording. So again, lick your fingers clean. Just trying to be my God. Early version. Wondering aloud. Wind up slipstream up the pool. Uh, wondering aloud again life's a long song up the pool uh, then it's got uh, the original life's a long song ep i really wasn't aware of that yes uh, which has life's a long song up the pool dr brogan broom bogan broom from later nursey and then dvd one contains uh audio of the remix in 5.1 surround dts uh, 9624 dolby uh, and then also flat transfers and other stuff. So again, no video content on here, but just all, all of the audio in, um, so you know. On. Basically, what you're getting here is you're getting uh, pretty much uh, a lot from the couple that Pete mentioned. That's pretty much uh, the Living in the Past compilation. I do know that that Life's a Long Song EP uh, made it in its entirety into that compilation. Yep, yep. Which is probably why you're not going to see like a special edition like this for living in the past because right. they, they yeah. have all that material, which was basically at the time just leftovers from these couple of albums that they released. Uh, right. They've they've included all that stuff on all of these reissues, so it's like you know what's yeah. the point. So uh, so there's Aqualung, and it sounds great by the way. I, I really like the Aqualung remix by Stephen Wilson. It's just you know Jack and I were talking before we went on the air about how fantastic most of these sound. Uh, you know, you're either a purist and you like the original or you want to hear them, you know, slightly, you know, brighter and uh, a little with a little more separation, all that kind of stuff. I think the Aqualung is one of Stephen Wilson's best uh, remixes of all of these. Uh, but there's a couple others that are really, really good, too. So we'll get to them as we go through. All right. So sure. after that is what uh, I don't have any of the uh, I think it's brick ones. Well, maybe I could talk about this in, a, in, in its stead. Um, so there's this um uh live in iceland so i i put this in i listened to it and uh in its entirety basically i got this as a souvenir because uh soon uh, Steve, uh bleh, pete and i went and saw ian anderson uh do both thick as a brick versions at uh um oh, beacon what? theater uh beacon theater yes thank you so this is kind of a souvenir for me it's basically the same concert we saw but uh you know, I'm sitting there, I'm watching it, and uh, my wife's like, how could you listen to that? It's like it drones on and on, and it's boring. I'm like, well, you know, that's how I feel about country music. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you kind of have to get an ear for it and, you know, listen to it with an open mind, and that's kind of how I got into Jethro Tull. But Yeah, yeah. I tell you, I would, li I would like to have the um, Thick as a Brick in the, the book, the, the, book, yeah. the book box yeah, I, they're out that. there you, you can get them but they're they're pricey right. yeah they're pricey. Uh, really I, i'm not sure what you're getting other than the actual i don't think you're getting any extra music i don't think the, so either yeah it's just you get the remix more book form and you know, you're getting the book and you get in the remix and you get the remix on the dvd that's basically it right but, you know you know what it is it's like if, you, if you're a collector and you want yeah. like the whole set that there's like right. a glaring hole in mine right so mm -hmm. um right. and that you know of course leads us up to this one oh, which i had to have this one because i am a huge fan of the chateau disaster sessions I, yeah i you know as much as i love a passion play in its you know final form 
Right. I sometimes I think I like the original original version that they intended for that, uh, which is yeah. which they've called the Chateau. How, how do you actually pronounce it? Chateau de Horaville Sessions. I don't know how you say yeah, that. So, you yeah, know the name yeah, of the yeah, studio. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, yeah. I, that's why I always I always go to Chateau Disaster because I can never pronounce right. yeah. de Horaville D apostrophe H E R O U V I L L E. I don't know how they pronounce that. But, uh, and what's interesting is that what's on here, and this I think of the original, the original recordings are different than what was on, uh, why, on uh, uh, Nightcap, okay? So yes, most, because I, I they, do have Nightcap, yeah. And that's great, but I, like yeah. Ian went and re-added in flute to a lot of those tracks in the 90s, uh, yeah. whereas you wow. listen to the original, the original uh, recordings from there, and there's very little flute in a lot of it. But of course, you know, they've got a lot of the big riffs and I think that that, that album originally was very, very heavy. Uh, so mm. you got, you know, like no rehearsal and audition and, you know, you got Skating Away was in the original. Skating Away and Ten Nights for New Day was in here. So you got, you know, Critique Oblique, Animal A, Law of the Bungle, Tiger Tune, The Big Top Scenario. Great, great stuff. Um, so you've got that whole, Disc 2 has the Stephen Wilson remix of the original sessions. Then Disc 1 is the new Stephen Wilson stereo remix of the album as we know it okay the 45 minute long passion play and then you've got uh, dvd one has audio and video uh it's basically some long lost film footage it's not very good as well as uh, the video with the hair who lost the spectacles you know obviously yeah we've seen that and then dvd two has just the uh the album so remixed on uh, in dvd format on uh, right. dolby digital ac3 and 5.1 surround sound so on and so forth and you know the uh you get a very wanted similar type package. Wanted a little cuts from that original Passion Play that I really fell in love with. Uh, the Overseer Overture, I believe it's called. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yo, there you go. I mean, these pictures are great in here. Because, you yeah. know, the Passion Play tour is like, you, there's really no footage, very little footage available from yeah. Passion Play as well as Minstrel That's in the true. Gallery. So, yeah. look, at, look at these photos. Great, great photos in here. I, I love this period in, in the history of Tull. Right. Yeah. Oh, great, great stuff. All, All right. right. So next up. Next up. One of one of the uh, one of the special editions that I got at the same time. Pete Pete got a different one. Very. Uh, this was actually Jethro Tull's return to uh, to a more conventional album. Uh, there you go. Uh, War Child. Yep. Uh, when I first bought War, Ch War Child as a teenager, I pretty much only listened to the three songs I knew, War Child, Skating Away, and Bungle in the Jungle, and I didn't really give the other, the rest of the album a chance, but once I did, I fell in love with it. So, you know, great songs. Uh, you know, for example, Queen and Country, Ladies, Back to Our Angels, uh, The Third Hurrah, Two Fingers, just a great album. Yeah. So then I so then I got the version uh, extended out to seventeen songs, uh, so that gave you Paradise Steak Saturation, uh, Sea Lion Two, uh, vocals from uh, Jeffrey Hammond, Quartet, um, Glory Row, which I and Rainbow Blues, which I already kn knew because I had the two greatest hit albums as a teenager. Yeah, those couple songs you could only get on the MU Greatest Hits for right. years. Yeah. It's like, you, yes. if you didn't have that, right. you didn't have those songs, right? And one thing I noticed, so on that 17-song CD, they call it the War Child Waltz, but here they call it Waltz of the Angels. Yeah. Listen, then it's the exact same exact song. Exact same thing, yeah. Yeah, but then, yeah, you... Okay. Uh, let's see if you can see that. Yeah. Uh, what I did was I bookmarked a few. And what you know, what's interesting about the War Child album is that a lot of those songs saw their genesis during the recording of Passion Play. Like right. half that album had they were you know screwing around with those songs during the Passion Play session. Ian in a card piece. Yeah, of course. That's. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'll just go through these really quick. Uh, one thing I read about in in this book, uh, in the book form, was that they were actually, Ian was thinking of making a movie. And uh, what happened was, uh, I mean, it was it was a couple things. He thinks he, he may have been able to get the funding, but uh, some famous uh, director kind of poo-pooed the thing and told him that it was basically crap. 
you know, hurt his feelings. So he went elsewhere. Uh, somebody else said it was good. Uh, he actually would have gotten John Cleese of Monty Python fame on board to, to write some of the comedic elements. Uh, of course, Ian, basically, all he, he would have been able to do was um, write, uh, like, kind of like an outline. Uh, he would have had, you know, he would have had to bring in some professional writers, and Cleese would have been one of them, to actually write the actual scripts and the, you know, the, the lines for everybody. But then what happened, uh, then he went to the U.S. to try and get back in there, and what happened was that they're like, uh, who's this person and who's that person? They didn't know anybody in, you know, in any, any of the fame people in, in the UK. So uh, he just, he said, screw it. He scrapped the whole thing. He just, he went, he went with the, the actual album. And what he did was uh, he had David Palmer at the time write a lot of this, the orchestration off of some of the ideas that he had. And you know what? Basically... For those of us that really love Jethro Tull, this gives you basically a whole nother album of material. Yeah. You know, they make that too. So, you know, you got all the, you know, the, the great songs, Paradise Steakhouse, Quartet, etc. Then you have like a whole section of, of all orchestration, which really cool. Yeah. Really no, um, only, the only drawback, there's no, um, no videos. Yeah. They have the outline of um, of what would have been a movie. Um, then I just got another couple other pictures. Uh, basically, what he did here, he gave you his uh, recording, chron you know, chrono chronology. What do you call that? Chronology. Chronology. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a little punchy. I need that beer. <laughs> little while yeah <laughs> that's sunday night beer right <laughs> yeah um so and then i have one more oh here we go this what i also read was this was originally supposed to be the front cover but uh -huh. ian didn't like it too much but what it does is it tells you uh who's who uh so all the members of the band are in there plus you know girlfriends a few models Terry Ellis, the uh, producer, uh, you know, the Chris Ellis person. Yep. Oh, yeah. He's a big wig over there. Oh, yeah. But very cool. Very cool. Nice. Yeah, I need to get that one. Having me do this forced me to get this, and I absolutely love it. Um, so getting back to Steve Wilson, <clears throat> I started to listen to the original. Uh, it, it just did not hold a candle to his remix. It, the remix, and, and I don't have... I have the TV, but I do not have um, what the heck is it the the um, um, the the theater. Oh, uh, for the surround sound, yeah, yeah, yeah. Surround sound, but you yeah. know what? I could still hear the difference. Well, I mean, he's and he's got a record saying he's not trying to change the um, the original intent of the music. What he's trying to do is just kind of uncover all the little nuances that might be buried in the original mixes, you know, due to the techno technological limitations of the time. So right. he's really gone in and he's tried to look at every little aspect of the music and just trying to bring it to the forefront, separate it so you can hear everything individually. And I think he's been pretty successful, not just with the Jethro Tull catalog, but he's done that with King Crimson and Yes. And, you know, he's done all sorts of Gentle Giant. Oh. And he's just, every band that he works with, all these classic albums, I mean, and he does a great job, I think. And you own some of these? Yeah, yeah. I have quite okay. a few of them, yeah. So silly me for asking. Right? <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know me. Um, so on the very same day that Jack got that one, and I think at the same minute, I think the, the auction Practically, at the same yeah. time, uh, I was able to track down this one, which oh, of course is Mitch Jones Gallery, which I had to have. I love this album to death. And, I'm gonna uh, have to try and get that. Yeah. I'm gonna have yeah. to space it out a few. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I hear yeah. you. I hear you. Plus, I just um, bought a car, and she's already, you know. Uh, taking little j jibes at me that, oh, now we can't spend on this and we can't go on vacation that. And, and oh, is that what you spent 150 on? <laughs> the, war the war child that I just showed him. That's right. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do? So here you got uh, mentioned on the gallery with the new Stephen Wilson stereo remix. So you got the entire album 
And then you got uh, things like, uh, so, you know, Mitchell in the Gallery, Cole went to Valhalla, Black Satin Dancer, Requiem, One White Duck, uh, Baker Street Muse, Grace, Summer Day Sands, uh, Requiem, early version, uh, One White Duck, Take Five, Grace, another version of Minstrel the Gallery, Cold Winds of Valhalla, and Aqualong from a BBC session. Then on disc two, and this is the kind of the cool part of this, is you get live at the Palais des Sports, Paris, France, July 5th, 1975. Um, and you got that on audio. Okay, so here it's the full concert. And this is a Jocko Jaxic stereo remix. Jocko, of course, is the guitar player for King Crimson now. So you got uh, Wind Up, Critique Oblique, very cool to hear that. Uh, yeah. Wondering Aloud, My God, which is a little medley. It's got Living in the Past in it and a couple other things. Awesome. Right. Quartet, Cross-Eyed Mary, Minstrel in the Gallery, Skating Away, Bungle in the Jungle, Aqualung, Guitar Improvisation, Backdoor Angels, and Locomotive Breath. And then the DVD audio of basically everything that's here and uh, a little bit of video. Okay, so DVD two, and I haven't watched and listened to all this. So we got audio and video which contains Live at the Palais de Sports mixed at five point. Ooh, really? Minstrel in the Gallery video promo clip for that. All right, so there's a little bit of video footage here. Uh, it, okay. So I haven't watched it yet. So, uh, but anyway, very cool. And, and like, you know, like, like everything else. And just uh, I have to say that Pete is the person who turned me onto this album years ago. I think you, uh, out of the blue, you just made it a recording it, uh, on cassette and handed it to me and, and I, I went home, listened to it. I'm like, wow, I love this. A minstrel is great. Street right. Muse. I, I love uh, I love the guitar solo in the beginning. Uh, Martin Bear actually gets the writing credit on Minstrel in the Gallery, I think, for that uh, That's right. extended guitar. He, still, he plays it live in his set to this day in his solo act. Yeah. Um, I, I call went to that. How is a great tune. I just, I really yeah. like this album a lot because I think this album is, is like equal parts the heavy bombastic mm -hmm. Jethro Tull with the more folky, you know, prog in as Mr. Wilson there himself talking about the album. So another really cool, um, you know, little package. As for acoustic numbers, I love One White Duck. That, that's oh, yeah, that's great. That's amazing. really good. Yeah. Really good. Okay. So what do we have now? Oh, he's got, he do have that. Yeah. So this I was a... <laughs> <laughs> that's what he does yeah. i know so this is the, the tv special edition because they did like a whole tv special on this right songs and uh and what they did was they re-recorded the entire album because of course they lip synced right so they re-recorded the right. entire album for them to go perform stand up and, and mimic right and so this as the original the re-recorded album for the tv special is now remixed by stephen wilson Okay, so that's from March 76. So the previous time releasing it, the whole album, uh, the re-recorded album, remixed, you get five original LP tracks, okay? Uh, you get the Marley, uh, Monte Carlo outtake of Quiz Kid uh, and a bunch of other associated recordings. You get Salamander's Ragtime, Commercial Traveler, The Small Cigar, Strip Cartoon, One Brian Mouse, um, and then- One uh, Brian Flat Mouse? Out. Yeah, it's on, it's on here too, I know, right? Wow. Really cool. Yeah, an early, ver an early version. So it just goes to show you wow. that song was kind of floating around before. Yeah, the, uh, well, we'll talk things. about that more in, 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 a, in a bit, yeah. And then on the DVD, you get audio and video of the stuff from the show and uh, associated How recordings. How long is that, that special? What's it, like an hour special? Uh, if that, yeah, I don't even think it's that long. But, well, you know, right. with all the talking, in the, in the uh, it was probably an hour yeah, at the time. Right. You know, I, uh, I've gone on record saying that this is not one of my favorite Jethro Tull albums. Um, I, I like songs from it. I think it's, it's, it's decent. Yeah, I was never it, a huge fan of it, but, um, you know, it is it's what it is. It's got some redeeming qualities. Uh, it does, it does. And I, I like yeah. the kind of the cartoon, you know, the oh, That's pretty thing. cool, yeah. Yeah, right. so, you know, you got a lot of that stuff in here. And, right. You know, it's, again, worth having because you get the whole lowdown of the making of the album and the TV show. And, right sort of stuff and uh it's pretty cool it's okay pretty cool. So. so before we get into my next one i don't want to like uh uh go t straight too far but i'm going to show you a few backgrounds so um from and and this is you know going back to so basically what you have here is uh this is it if you're what so in the dvd version from war child if you're watching on your TV, as the music's playing, you see all these visual, um, um, you know, pictures and stuff. And what's really cool is uh, what this looks like a cover to uh, 
to like an MPEG or a, or a reel to reel recording. Yep. You know, and, uh, and so I won't go into too much detail, but he's got pictures of, uh, of uh, songs where you have like multiple tracks being played. And, you know, it's almost like uh, if you record today, you can see it all on your screen. But back then they would write it out for you. Know, oh, yeah. Yep. Track, yeah. So um, I'll show you uh, two more pictures at this time. Uh, is this one. And that looks like that's from the Minstrel in the Gallery tour, right? Uh, or, may, or maybe from... Uh, I, I picked this picture because it's got Jeffrey Hammond Hammond with a zebra stripe. Yeah. And then you, you, you have, he's actually playing an upright string bass, which is also white and black, like a zebra. And uh, it's like Ian was actually playing a larger guitar at that time, uh, acoustic. Yeah, that's he a great picture. kind of shrunk down over the years. And then I have one more. And then I'll move on to my next album, which I didn't get any pictures. Shame on me. Great Martin Bear. Yeah, there you go. Playing yeah. an SG. Very cool. Yep. So, all right. So I'll take, so at this time, I'll take the background off. All right. There we go. Okay. So the next album, which I should have, uh, you know, again, I didn't think about it, but, uh, there's some really great pictures from this album. And both Pete and I absolutely love this album. And uh, we were talking about receipts. Here's one, it's still in here. So there's a place in West Babylon called Looney Tunes. And I bought it there at uh, $49.99. Yep, that's, that's about right. That's, yep. that's about what it was going for. Could you imagine trying to buy this off of eBay or wherever now? Well, like I said, I right after I got the uh, the minstrel, I tried. I entered another auction for that one there, but uh, you know it was literally you know low one hundreds, and then some guy. It was like literally a minute before it was going to end, and some guy added like fifty dollars to it and won the auction. I'm like, oh. so he wanted to spend like a hundred and eighty on it. I'm like, yeah. You can have it, dude. But yeah, if you go to like yeah. buy it outright, it's gonna cost you like two and a quarter at least. My my daughter Sam taught me a trick how to try and win, but you know, basically, you know, it's your your absolute ceiling of what you wanted to spend. And uh, for uh, War Child, I two fifty was my ceiling. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. I, didn't I know, have right? Yeah, so that's what you guys yeah. see. I don't know anything about the, the eBay bids. I don't know but, how to do that stuff. Yeah, this was a picture that I wanted to, uh, to oh, show. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is a, uh, just an amazing, amazing picture. Yeah. I'll show it to you on the screen, but this will do as well. Uh, this was the photo shoot that they did in the woods. Yep. Um, I'm just going to quickly. Oh, this, this is a really cool picture. Uh, Martin Lancelot Barret on a hunting expedition with what looks like uh, I was reading in War Child he got a Bentley and uh, I was gonna say yeah he had to borrow two phone books to to, to sit up so he could you know see properly <laughs> that, that's funny in a freaking Bentley I know right you know <clears throat> I think even oh this this whimsical guy right here John Evan oh yeah John Evan yep yeah. yeah. yep and don't worry, I only have like a couple more. I won't get into it too much. Um, may he rest in peace. Love, love this guy, John Glasscock. Yeah, yeah. Really I good bass player. Really saw good him about player. a month before he passed away, but we'll get into that soon. Um, David Palmer now goes by the name D Palmer. D Palmer, that's right. Yep. Um. Last but not least is uh, this, and we'll talk. Ian Anderson. There he is. Anti Claus. <laughs> I actually got a few things for for Christmas, Jethro Tull related items. Uh, one which I can tell you because I don't have it with me: the Jethro Tull Christmas album. Uh, people, if you need a Christmas album, get That's it. That's great. I listen to it every year. Amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. really good. Yeah. Um, so. Not too many, so I'm not going to read through the actual song list. I think everybody knows, this, you know, the songs on the original um, songs from the wood. But you have a couple 
um, associated recordings or extras unreleased. Old Aces Die Hard, Working Joe, John Working Joe. Uh, there's a couple different versions of uh, uh, Magic Bells, or was the original title of Ring Out Solstice, Solstice Bells. Bells yeah. uh, there's another, another version of One Brown Mouse on here. Uh, another version of Strip Cartoon. But lo and behold, they have a freaking video concert on this. Uh, November of 1977, uh, uh, where is it? Let me read that. Uh, yes, November 1977 at the Capitol Center, Landover, Maryland, where the uh, you know, Washington Capitals play. Yep. Uh, they, they have a full, full concert. Uh, and this was very interesting. He actually came out and started acoustic. He opened with Wondering Aloud and Skating Away. Uh, so then, uh, and then he did uh, Jack and the Green. And then he went into Thick as a Brick, uh, Songs from the Wood, the instrumental. And then he, uh, then he did drum solo improv. Then they went into To Cry You a Song. A New Day Yesterday, uh, the flute solo, Living in the Past. Uh, then, then you switch to another disc, Velvet Green, a song that I absolutely love. Yeah, yeah. Girl, Too Old to Rock and Roll, which we know, Minstrel, Cross-Eyed Mary, Aqualung, Wind Up, Backdoor Angels, Guitar Improv, uh, Locomotive Breath, Land of Hope and Glory, and then another Backdoor Angels reprieve. That's a killer set list. Oh, <laughs> without a doubt. Yeah, that's why, why I, I got to get that. Get, we may have to get together and watch this one. <clears throat> Actually, I watched this one night with uh, Sam's boyfriend, and he loved it. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I got to get a hold of that. That's, yeah. It's got to so, happen. Not so much with the extra songs, but you know what? That, that concert. Uh, the, yeah. the, the CD concert. So. Oh, nice. So you got both audio and video. That's good. Yes. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Dynamite. Yes. That leads us to this one. Yes. I may have set that one up. Yeah, this is quite good. I mean, it's a great album as it is. So you get the, the Stephen Wilson stereo remix of the album. You get the associate. So this is the one, one of the, you know, couple that have just great bonus tracks. So the associated recordings, you got Living in These Hard Times, uh, Everything in Our Lives, I Jacqueline. I love that song, Living in These Hard Times. Oh, uh, it's a great song. Great that song. almost made my top 10, believe it. Oh, really? Me. Wow. I love that song. You get an early version of Jacqueline, which is all acoustic, which is quite good. Right. You get Quatrain, you got Horse Hoeing Husbandry, Beltane, Botanic Man. Right, that's another great song I love, Beltane. Right, Beltane is great, right? And then uh, disc two and three, this is what's worth it. You get a full concert from uh, the Bernie May in 1978, remixed by Jacko Jaksik. And you got, you know, great set list. You got uh, No Lullaby, Sweet Dreams, Skating Away, Jack and the Green, uh, One Brown Rouse, Heavy Horses, New Day Yesterday, Flute Solo, Living in the Past, New Day Yesterday, Songs from the Wood, Thick as a Brick, Hunting Girl, Too Old to Rock and Roll, Conundrum, Minstrel in the Gallery, Cross-Eyed Mary, Quatrain, Aqualung, Locomotive Breath, and the Dam Busters March. Uh, so let me do you, so first of all does it have video or no no there's no video in this unfortunately oh, okay uh the only uh -huh. video you get is um on disc dvd2 recorded live at the bottom of the switzerland remixed uh stereo yeah what's on here what's the other on? question is how is how is that concert any different from bursting out because i noticed a lot of which is basically the album they re the first live album they released to the a good portion of the bursting out album was taken from this show so oh, okay. you'll, you'll know you'll notice a lot of the similarities yeah so right. uh, a bunch of it was taken from here um I'm assuming you have more in your version than the actual live album bursting out yeah yeah exactly so, but worth having, um, quite good also. And, you know, you get the whole great uh, pictures. Oh, you, get, you get a nice little story about how Ian was like scared shitless when they were taking this photograph because he's you know, be next to these yeah. two enormous, you know, yeah. horses and all that yeah. kind of stuff. But, you know, wouldn't want to be stepped on by one of those. 
No, no, but they're such gorgeous creatures. I mean, they really yeah. are. Oh, yeah. Clydesdale horses, you know. So mm -hmm. great stuff in here, as you can imagine, all sorts of uh, cool concert nice. shots and info on the band, you know. So another must-have, really. This is the new the new shoes edition. Is what okay. Um, so I can probably say we both have this one. Uh, this one is, yes, we do. Oh, you haven't opened yours? Oh, I have, yeah. It's just the pants oh. over. Oh, okay. Because uh, for a second, it, oh, okay. I thought that uh, I, I saw like cellophane on you. Oh, yeah. No, no. I opened it. <laughs> but uh, this one is special to me. I mean, unfortunately, I got a little disappointed that I thought it had um, a video concert because I thought I saw one on YouTube recently, but it turns out it was only the audio. But the good this, one, though. I'm sorry? It's a good one, though. Oh, it is. I, I, so far, I listened to the first half of it, but um, this was the first time I saw Jethro Tull. I saw them at Nassau Coliseum, and uh, it was very interesting, the format of the concert. They played like six or seven songs off of uh, Stormwatch immediately to open the show. Then they went into, you know, to get the crowd back into it, they jumped into Aqualung. Then they played a couple of other songs that I had never heard, and uh, Back then, you didn't have all these little extras that, that you can dive into. So I never heard of, uh, you know, uh, King Henry's magic, Madrigal, but they did play that the night I saw them. Um, Barry Moore Barlow went into that, uh, that drum solo, which was amazing. Uh, David Palmer introduced it. Um, you know, then, uh, you know, then they did a few other things, jams, O'Donnell's jigs. Uh, I don't... They played it that night. I saw them, but I didn't remember it. Uh, I actually went back to to our favorite uh, setlist.fm just to just to see from you know, from that night. And somebody wrote it down, believe it or not. Um, uh, then the, you know, then then they did the classics: Too Old to Rock and Roll, Cross-Eyed Mary, Minstrel, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, Maybe do uh, you want to talk about the associated recordings? Which you yeah, I mean, you know, for me, that's probably the real, you know, the live stuff is fantastic. But man, the associated recordings on this are just terrific. So you got yeah. uh, Crossword, which was available on, I believe, the 20th anniversary box set. Um, and you got an early version of Dark uh, Ages. You got Kelpie, which is a great yeah. song. Uh, Dun Run Deal, an early version of that. You got a Stitch in Time, which I believe Stitch in Time was that on Nightcap. I don't remember. Uh, it sounds those. familiar, yeah. You got an instrumental uh, called The Single Man. You got Broadford Bazaar, another great yes, song. Yes, good song, yeah. King Hendry's Magical. Uh, you I got a full-length version yeah. of Orion. You got Urban Apocalypse, was, yeah. which is mind-blowingly good. And it's like, yeah. how has Ian held that in the vaults for all these years? Is beyond yeah. me. Uh, the Lyricon Blues instrumental, which is great. Man of you know, God, it, another full-fledged... Yeah, heavy. You know, it tone. could be as simple as that. It just didn't fit the theme of the album that they were recording. Right, but what's 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 crazy is that he didn't. He has all. He's had all these. Um, you know, he, he could have put it on the 20th anniversary box set. He could have put it on the 25th anniversary box set. He could have put it on the original remaster reissue of uh, of, of um, Stormwatch. He didn't. So the fact that he waited till the 50th anniversary or the 40th anniversary box set. Yeah, so throw that out there. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, we've got uh, Man of God and Urban Apocalypse. Here you go. Yeah, and everybody's like, holy crap, these songs are great. I, I actually listened to this while working last week, and yeah, I loved it. It was great. Yeah, it's great, right? But, Another uh, rock instrument. Uh, all off again dream. this week. Yeah, and it's great stuff. I mean, it's just. Uh, so, Pete, how are we doing on time? We're probably about at time, but we we got to hear your final uh, five. Well, the I got a couple of things that I have to try and do quickly. So, oh, cool. Okay, there we go. Yeah. So, okay. So, my uh, my top five, um, number five, title track to Minstrel in the Gallery, number four off of Crest of a Knave from 1987. Love this song, Farm on the Freeway. Great song. Number three off of uh, Songs from the Wood. Uh, Velvet Green. Uh, to me, that epitomizes everything they did with that whole Celtic folk era. Love it. Number two, uh, it's, a, it's a full length. It's a song that takes up the whole album, Thick as a Brick, in all its different forms. Uh, number one, off of Stand Up, 
Nothing is easy. Oh, great song. That's yeah. Nothing is easy. Yeah. So that's my top 10. Um, very quickly, my daughter bought me this for Christmas about a year or so ago, The Ballad of Jethro Tull. This is the authorized version from Ian Anderson. Uh, it, it's a, it, it is a great book. Uh, um, you get some great artwork. Uh, you know, you know that one very well. Oh yeah, for Songs in the Wood. Yep. 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 Um, I got to go through this quickly. Um, oh, here's an early picture of Glenn Cornick. <laughs> yeah, before he got the hat and uh, the hippie look, and yeah, the mutton chop hair there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's. Yeah. It's is this book like a full history, like up until, you know, dot yes. com, basically? Okay. Yeah. But, but, but what's interesting about it, it's kind of in, um, how would you say, uh, if you, if you look, it's, it's kind of an interview form. So they, okay. you know, they'll Ian Anderson and Dave Palmer, John Evan, you know, they'll, they'll all talk about little snippets of things. Mm -hmm. Now this version is still available. If you go to Jethro com. There's a you know, nice centerfold type thing. Mm -hmm. yep. Let me get my face off of my fingers off of Martin's face. That's a great <laughs> picture. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, wait. Oh, there you go. Dick, All right, Rick. My number two. Um, let's go. To, oh, here we go, Mr. Zebra. There he is. Yeah, I don't think he was the greatest bass player. He was he was more there because he was Ian's friend. I mean, I think he was a he was great on stage. He was just yeah. you know he was more of a showman. But to me, I don't think he held a candle to Glenn Cornick or John Glasscock. Right, right, right. Yep. I love this picture too. Yeah, it's a good one. The pirates. <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh, I, I don't know if we you know have time for anything else, but. Uh, that's there a cool was book. Another version of this, but but there was only 500 copies where Ian signed it, and there was actually a, a 45 RPM that uh, I I think told some stories or you know prose or whatever. But hmm. pretty cool. I may have to get that. That's pretty cool. But uh, <laughs> I I told Sam I want I should I I actually sent her the video of uh, Ian Anderson uh, plugging it. Like the this one is what I want. Now you know what to get me. Yeah. So and do not you know deviate. <laughs> very resourceful that she she is. It was it was under the tree for me. There you go. Very cool. The perfect gift. Yep. <laughs> so speaking of perfect gifts, uh, you know we'll be coming up on uh, Christmas time in a couple of months. So if any of you have a loved one who's a Jethro Tull fan, you can get a hold of any of these wonderful Jethro Tull items. Yeah. Uh, we would you know highly recommend you do so because they they make. Uh, Big stuffing stockers, uh, stuffing oh. stuckers, stuffing. Did I say stuffing stockers? Stocking stuffers. <laughs> you might have, yeah. <laughs> but seriously, late, if you're a big fan of Jethro Tull like we are, these are like forever keepsakes. They are just absolutely yeah. wonderful. Yeah, they're gorgeous. And uh, like I said, uh, hopefully we will see A and Broadsword and the Beast coming out over the next, you know, couple of years. Broadsword the Beast I would be interested in. I would love to get my hands on Crest of a Knave was like the first few songs. Uh, yep, yep. Shout so we'll out see. to my grandmother, who's, uh, who is of Hungarian descent. Uh, I fell in love with the song, uh, you know, uh, One Night in Budapest. There you go. That's a great one. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So I hope everybody enjoyed this little uh, trip down Jethro Tull, special editions, remixes, remasters, and box sets, booklets, and all that good stuff. So uh, there's more than what we have, but uh, I think uh, we got a good chunk of some of this stuff. So uh, Thanks so much for having me on for this, Pete. This was a real trip. That was fun. I, I kind of want, been wanting yeah. to do something like this for a while. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I've done so many Jethro Tull shows, but it's like there's never like there's never a shortage of things to talk about when it comes to yeah. me and yep. Anderson and the company. So, uh, so there you have it, guys. Visit us on the web at www.seeatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube. All the damn time. I was That's ready right. at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so have a good rest of the Sunday, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow morning uh, with Martin Popoff for some budgie. So uh, take care, everybody. We'll see you Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>